Mm -hmm. are the bottom third of page Tesvov, and the line starts with the word yeah. Ze, maybe the day Shuv. Thank you very much. Ze, maybe the day Shuv. Actually, the, the sentence begins in previous line. Ain't the maybe they should. So even though we're saying that that avoider automatically goes rotsu v'shuv, because as great as the rotsu is, it is not in itself satisfying, and it goes into shuv for the fullest appreciation and recognition of presence of the course. So that's where there is Marotsu Vishu. However, there is an instance of there is a Rotsu without the need of a Shuv. And that is, we have pointed out in two instances, two general instances, that, uh, that if the Ahava, if the Rotsu, is um, for for the oil and surf not because the oil and surf is so close and so um, dedicated but on the contrary because the oil and surf is so uh, supreme it's completely out of this world out of worldliness and therefore his also is for that which is above the world and there he wants to be incorporated and out of worldly measures and therefore that does not that does not bring to shoe automatically and similarly uh, there's a new novel recognition of something that we discussed way back when when we talk about the ahava that is actually uh, uh, from of, uh, from kiru from the kiru velikus and there we say from Kirov Lelokus, from the closeness of Lelokus, that Ahava brings automatically to Shu because he cannot experience closeness to Lelokus in a full measure unless you bring it down here in Telo Mitzvah. And yet, there is an element, an aspect of there, a possibility that there too there is an Ahava and here a, a Rotsu Vitara Shu. That is what's called Ava Betal Nugin. And um, this Ava Betal Nugin we discussed uh, this morning. And we explained briefly that Ava normally is associated with the quality of Rotsoin. We discussed this morning these two aspects of Oinag and Rotsoin, which are Koyches Makifim. And um, which are, so to speak, the, the Nefesh presence to the to the conscious agreement to the conscious to the conscious awareness um, and Ahab normally associated with Rotsin and therefore if it is Rotsin he wants something he cannot be satisfied unless it goes down back into Shub but then there is a need for Ahab of Talmud we're not, but it's not just when he wants it, but he actually experiences it. He has, he delights in this Ava. Then it does not demand that it should be a shuv. It is complete in itself. Okay, and this is where we're up to. Again, you know, about a third in the bottom of the page, a line begins with the word Zem, maybe the shuv. The Yeshlema, in the parentheses, 
having identified the pshat and that Ava Betal Nugim does not lead to Shu. So he says, Shleima, it can be further clarified and said, Shazehu Mashakosu Beshefer Shobainani. That this, but we have now pointed out, actually is um, is a principle that it says in Tanya, Safe Perik to Mem, the Avo, these are quotes from Tanya, the Avo, Bli Avoido, he Avo Betanuni. He says in Tanya that Avo should bring to avoid to bring to avoid material mitzvahs. Avo, Bli Avoido, Avo that is not associated with avoid with any kind, with any material mitzvahs. This is a supreme Avo, it's called Avo Betanuni. And this is, in fact, what we have now identified that Ava B'tal Nugim does not demand the union of Aveda and of Tero Mitzvahs because it is completely self-satisfied. Therefore, okay, that's the end of this principle. Therefore, we have identified, we said that not Ava, that, that not every Rotsu will compel the union from Shuv. There could be two types of Rotsu that do not result in Shuv. One is if the Rotsu is to be incorporated in that which is above world. And therefore it does not demand the union from Shuv go back into the world and do to which which is not interested in world. He's interested in that which is above world. And um, the other instances where his Avo is so all-encompassing that it is no longer a drawing and no longer a seeking like Rotsu. Rotsu, rather, it is, it is entirely self-satisfying, the union from Oinek. There, too, there is not the union of Rotsu. Ah, however, Kasher ho Rotsu hu bibkhines bitu if the Rotsu has also associated with the Dinya for Beetle, what is this? Uh, what, what's the point here? Because we said that there could be a Rotsu where he has got such an all encompassing desire for the Lukus that he is not, that he does not go back to Shuv, he goes out of the world. That means that his experience of Ahavo is so powerful and so profound that he's not interested in, in anything else. So he says that that is an Ahavo, it's a very wonderful thing, but it's lacking something. What is it lacking? The Bikinus beetle. The beetle element. I'll combine to this. Kasher a rotsu who bechinus beetle oz ye acher of shuv. Then there would be a shuv after this. After this rotsu. More hot water. So, um, um, what, what is this? What is this beetle about? We discussed this morning, when we talk about this Ava Betal Nugim, and this Ava, the desire to to rise out of the world. So we said, why would, how can one want to be outside of the world? Remember that? And we explained that that this is a an experience of the nesh- pure presence of neshama. Neshama is not worldly, not worldliness. Therefore, it is 
it is within the capacity of the of the mm-hmm. of the nefesh or odo, to want total freedom from worldliness. Because in essence, the neshama is above world. Therefore, what this means is that the union of Abba to the Cruz is what we one could say is a natural element in the Neshama. It is not necessarily the union of Avoyla Hashem, doing what, pursuing that which the Shlichus with the Rebbe Hashem has, has placed upon it. Due to its own nature, to what this Hashem is, this is what he wants. And this is what the Rebbe says, if the Rots has the, has a truth element in it, the Mechina's beetle of the Indian from beetle. There would be a corruption, there would be a shub afterwards. What is this beetle about? If he has a desire for a cruise, which is a wonderful thing, which is definitely a worthy desire, a worthy pursuit. So what is this, what is this beetle about? Presents another dimension in the, in the sense of, of the truth of the Mishon. Let's first place it, give it a, 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 a definition. He has beetle, because he has beetle, therefore he. He, um, he pursues an avoider that is in conformity with, with the divine the will. It is not just satisfying his own interest, his own field, but it's conformity with, with the divine, with the, with the godly will. Why would one have beetle when his desire is so pure and so great? And be mevatel that desire, and to, and to go back into 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 world. And I said here there is a a a, 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 a very a deep and profound union of of what's called what truth is. The Neshama is supreme, very, very fine, and all it wants is a locus, which is the truth. Doesn't want to admit she is. Where does, there is, a, so here there is the additional dimension here. To recognize the truth, in addition to the seeing that he wants only the truth, there's a different, there's another point. Where do I get that desire from? How did I obtain this kind of, this kind of purity? 
the whole present to the Nisholim, the whole purity is that which is which was given by the neighbors. It is not, as we discussed this morning, uh, the last couple of days, it, it is impossible by virtue of personal avoider to reach that type of this that type of desire. Because no matter what one's what one accomplishes through avoider, through his own avoider, his own recognition, you should want that which is true and so forth. He still wants it to be within within worldly uh, parameters, so that he would you know, he would have what he would know what he has. Then that he wants to go out of this world. Is that he has an, an element that is that is um, not of his own doing. Something that was given to him. That's why it's possible for him to go out of this world. If this is something that was given to you. To recognize the truth of this, you have to recognize the reason why this was given to you. Otherwise, again, you're not having the truth of it. You you relate to what was given, not but not the kavon of why it was given. The kavon of why it was given, that is the real truth. And that's the inhabit. By Moshe Rabbeinu, it says, Moshe Rabbeinu was on a mountain when Yidin made the Ego. At that time, Moshe Rabbeinu was receiving the Torah from the mirrors. And then he was told, Hashem says to him, on the mountain, Lech Reid, go descend. The seam of shot in the post like descend, descend means descend from the mountain. Lechrein, descend from the mountain. Rashi gives the following additional insight. That Lechrein means Reid Migduloscha. Step down from your greatness, step down from your position. Why step down from your position? Because Kulum Nosati Lokobidula Ella Bishri Israel. I only gave you greatness, Bishri Israel, for the purpose of of giving of bring of, of, for the sake of Yid. So you should be able to bring terror to Yid. But Yid have sinned. And therefore there is the, the the reason, the purpose of why you were given greatness has now, so to speak, been cancelled out. Step down. Maisha has acquired, has reached such great greatness that no creature could uh, um, uh, has reached before or after. And um, but there was a reason for it. And when this reason has um, has been cancelled, has been lost then your greatness is no longer greatness. Because the purpose and the, the reason for that greatness has been has been cancelled. Right? This is an Indian that we are learning with <coughs> From time to time, we, we, we come across this, this, this principle that the kavana, the initial kavana, that is the real force behind the, the whole reality. That's the real, that's the real, the, 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 the real reality, the truth of, of anything. That which initiates it. And, um, we learned it by, by the Koya Hayat, all kinds of Masholim. And that's what he says that if he has a Rotz, and he has a Rotz, and he has an Ahava, 
but there is a the beetle is missing, which means that he is actually experiencing the nature that he was given rather than why he was given. Who gave it to you? Then he's missing the whole thing. Kasher hu bebchines beetle. When this rotz is bebchines beetle, or bebchines anochas atzmusay, and I'm, I'm sorry, I skipped a couple of Ah, kasher the rotz is bebchines beetle. Okay, going back to the line begins he or Abu Tamuy. When the Rotsu is has the element of beetle. And as we said, this beetle is, is an extremely important and true ingredient in this whole Rotsu. If beetle is missing, it's a it's a it's a very fine human quality beyond imagination. But it's not godly. Because it's lacking this final liquid of truth. This is what we want to come kind of from the Rambam. What is the principle of What created everything? Not his presence. The truth of his presence. A meat is emotion. This truth, this, this additional word, a, a, a meat is emotion. Not his emotion. changes the whole perspective of the entire creation. If it is his presence that creates it, why his presence? So, so everything has a presence. If it is a meat is emotion, it says the truth. So therefore, therefore, the truth has to permeate everything. And therefore, there has to be a new from Beetle. Okay? Yeah. Truth is higher than his presence? There's only a truth because of his, his presence. Let's understand what we're saying. Where is the Ramam come by saying Amit is him what's the truth of his presence? What does the truth of his presence mean? What's meant Amit is him what's we discussed this in you know, various points, maybe again, <sighs> depending on where what we're discussing. But the principle of truth, especially when you talk about the Lakus, the truth. A presence has a source. A truth does not have a source. Can we follow this? Can we realize this this very fine principle? Truth does not have a source. Doesn't they don't, you don't need a reason why truth exists. Truth is the true the true present true the, is the, the true reality. Um, how does presence need a source? Where does it come from? What does it mean he's there? You say that truth is there, so it doesn't, you don't need any further explanation. His presence has an element of truth. That is his presence. Truth, it doesn't, it, it, that goes beyond, beyond the question. That is real, that is the, the real originality, so to speak. And this is what it's saying that that in order to relate to, to this truth, there has to be beetle. Because if it not, beetle means it's not a, it's not the mitzvah that I'm looking for. I'm looking for the truth. If I'm looking for the mitzvah, it's no longer the truth.
I'm not sure I follow, follow that. Uh, it, in other words, if uh, it was a shepherd. Yeah, I'll give you, let's yeah. come down a little bit to earth. You come to a chasana. It's a very pleasant atmosphere. The food is good. The chazonis is wonderful. <laughs> you woke up. Everything is great. And and for the meantime, as you're enjoying the chazonis and you're enjoying the food, who's interested in the chasan kala? He can and then the whole thing is is meaningless. It's a fake chasana. But why? Uh, I understand all that. But why is that synonymous with non-presence? In other words, let's say everything came from the mitzvahs of Hashem. Hashem's. So why wouldn't he seek even the Ava? He's still seeking. Whatever that original Matthias is, why do we have to say that it's a different quality if it comes from a non, so a non presence? Why wouldn't he seek the ultimate presence? What makes it different to say that it comes from a non presence? Again, so I'm coming back to this muscle yeah. of the chasana. In the muscle of the chasana, the chasana and kala would be the the, the original mitzvahs, let's say. The no, chasana and kala is not an entity. Chasana and kala are entities unto themselves. You can't experience chasana and kala. So the truth of it is the is the simcha is the is the is the, the simcha which is an intangible thing. It's an intangible thing. If you walk away with the father, the food was good, then you haven't been participating in the song, in the chasm. What makes it different that to say that there's, when you're pointing to there's some kind of, there's a truth that you're walking away with. In your personal experience, horse and color are not a presence. A certain kind of a remote reality. They have nothing to do with you. They're going to build in our home. Something of phenomenal significance is occurring. What is what is it significant to you? No, it's significant in some kind of a of an overall reality, truth, a guy in, in God's world. I don't do with you. Parents raise children. And in the world there's a constant emphasis on well, have nachas, give covet, recognize me. This is not what we are about. Our children oh, Hashem get raised grow up, they stand on their feet. And they go away, and they live thousands of miles away, and they're doing their own thing. That's our nachas. You're seeking something that's mamish remote from you, from from you. It's for, from your personal experience, absolutely. It's not your personal experience. If it was Matthias, you'd be. It would be you would want to have your kid next to you. Listen, the should be hopeful that there is some kind of a, there's a new development, there's Skype, so you can see your children more often. Instead of seeing them one in five years, you can see them more often. But that's it. And this shows, this is showing us that uh, there's an ending of. That the children yeah. are real things. They belong to God, not to you. And you really 
are into that. And so too by the initial his, his you want God to fulfill God the initial will, why there is the whole thing. Nitis and motto is how the true mamish in the English so to speak. Mm-hmm. And that's what you want. That's what, that's what you're seeking. The what now? How the truth is unto him. Yeah, and not truth. how you experience it. You experience his motto. Oh, mm-hmm. he's so great and so wonderful. Look at this beautiful world. That's not a Midi uh, So Mamsi Kolim, so everything, every every Mitzias is reflecting this in Midi Exactly. That is where, where the real instinct is. And this is the big difference between the way you can take it and the way the way they're going to take it. They cannot relate to the Midi It's wonderful. Be a good person. It's an interesting, a, huh? What's the conclusion you're looking <laughs> No, no, it's that that way. No, no, I, I want to hear what you said again. You, you know, I felt you agreed with it. Right, I said exactly. You said? <laughs> um, I said that, uh, that it says in Rambam that me emiti si matso man si konim that from the truth of his presence comes into being all all Matthias. So, which means that all Matthias are um, reflecting the the truth the way it is in Hashem's uh, is in Hashem's in Hashem's truth. All Matthias reflects not that he exists, but that he is true. And, and if you have this this foundation, this is so so then when this person goes about the Rotsu Yes the element of Bita. Because he's not seeking his Mitsias, Mitsias and experience. He's seeking the truth. And truth I can only get I get through Bita. Because Mitzius, by definition, is not true. Not truth. There has to have a reason. Okay, <laughs> Reb Shloime, we had all the secrets. Sounds like this is really sort of a, um, I guess, how does Facetus look at this? It's maybe off the topic a little bit. Well, that's not on the topic. I mean, in other words, it, it seems to be in Tanya talking about this is such a myla, but really it seems to be uh, not such a myla. I mean, no, like no, it's a tremendous myla, provided it comes along with Beetle. Which means that you have Ahavatan Nungim, but what is the ultimate goal is is to fulfill the, the Rotsan by you know, why the Rebbe should give you such an Asham to be revealed in the, in the course in the world? Right, but it says Beli Avoida. So Beli Avoida. Beli Avoida means that it does not necessarily reflect. The, okay, so I would only. So the Rebbe says like this that there could be Ava Betal Nugim with along with the Beat. During the moment of the Tanugim, it is Tanugim, but then he, he realizes that that is not the end. 
the end purpose. The end purpose is to take the quote unquote the energy and the inspiration that comes from this and bring it back into the world. And bring this whole highest into into Tehromitz. So these two, <coughs> these two levels of uh, Rotsa to be without Shuv. And that Abba could be without Shuv, but then there is a beetle that brings it back into Shuv. Okay. So he's showing here the Shuv is not automatically incorporated within these kinds of... Um, the ultimate Madrigi of Shuv is due to beetle. There is Madrigi of Shuv that we discuss all the time that he's still not fully satisfied. I see. So there's something lacking inside the roots. But the ultimate way, if there's nothing lacking, what is the show he's going to be? That is the, <laughs> this is where the real truth is. Mm-hmm. The, the Rotsu is initiated with, with Bittu, or the Bittu comes at its later stage? So, very, 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 very good point. There's a story Everyone knows the story, right? Amongst them was Rabbi Kiva. And there were three others. Each one of the four had a different reaction. Generally speaking, there was a negative reaction. Inappropriate reaction. There was one that was completely off, off the path. Then there were two that had different kind of reaction. Rabbi Kiva was the only one that not only didn't have not a negative, but this uh, this uh, elevated him. Why? So there's, a, there's an expression in, in the Gemara: "Nichnas b'sholim, b'yotzal b'sholim." So therefore, this beetle really is in the original state. Nichnas b'sholim, b'yotzal b'sholim. How do we get to yotzal b'sholim? Is because nichnas b'sholim. What does this mean? You're asking question where the beetle begins at the end. No, the begins the beetle begins in the beginning. Why are you where are you going in the first place? What's what's what business do you have over there? If you if your intent over there is you're looking for that in order to to get the truth of Alakus, the beetle, then then you a result. is waking somebody. Again, the Nikmas Bashalom is he seeking the truth of Elokus. The reason you go into this high Mad Vegas is not to satisfy your own interests. Rather to uncover... Rather to fulfill the, 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 the godly mission, godly will. It's interesting also, and uh, see this explains, Avraham Avinu had Mesidus Nefesh, and Rabbi Kiva had Mesidus Nefesh. But here we're talking about both, you know, Rabbi Kiva also, of, 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 still there was a difference. Abraham it says, by Rabbi Kiva it says, when Rabbi Kiva was, was being tortured to death, literally. So the Tamim said, thank you, thank you. So the Tamim said to Rabbi Kiva, why are you letting this happen to you? Admosa, Admosa, you know. And Bakiva said, Kol Yom, I, my whole lifetime I was I was hoping for this for uh, to for this uh, for this from Mesir Snapish. To fulfill this in from Mesir Snapish. And by Avramovino was also full of Mesir Snapish throughout his lifetime. Whatever you throughout his lifetime. 
even to the point of taking his son on the altar, sending away Yishmo was Mesiris Nefesh, as the Pesach says. And this was something which, sending away Yishmo from the house was Mesiris Nefesh. He says in Pesach, this was pretty hard for him to do. See, this explains that there is a, a principal difference between Mesiris Nefesh and Avram and that of Akiva is that Avram, he was in a totally different time and totally different position. Avram Avinu, his preoccupation, his focus was on being a Farsi Malakos, on bringing Malakos into the world that people know about Malakos. That was his focus. And in that focus, you know, fulfilling that aim, nothing would stop him. If Mesiris Snefesh was necessary, so Mesiris Snefesh was available. But he did not seek Mesiris Snefesh for the purpose of Mesiris Snefesh, for the Madrig of Mesiris Snefesh. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try. Wait, wait. The last point, I missed the last. You think nobody's on? Yeah. Well, uh, let me try try again. Maybe I, I got disconnected somehow. Welcome to... Welcome to... At the tone, please... Thank you. You are now entering the... You are participant number four. Okay. I know we got disconnected somehow. So Rabbi Akiva, who had this... When he went into the parlance, he had the... Here, it seems like... You know, it was not no, no, it's not the same thing as Avraham Avinu, but it was also why did he seek this? Because of this, he also had Avinu Hashem. But he was in a different place of Avinu Hashem. So, so to, in other words, uh, when we, we we heard it from from the Rebbe multiple times, this uh, this uh, this comparison. So we, we it it point it pointed out not not to not to exalt Avraham Avinu you know, over Rabbi Akiva, but just to point out for us that that it's more shy for us. Avraham Avinu you know, is avoided, not Rabbi Akiva. Is that that's correct? You could say that's correct. I, I don't, I don't, um, uh, I don't go for this expression exalt Avram because we don't compare. Uh, even though Avram Avin is Avram Avin, Avram Avin, the the um, in King Dalem Al Talmud, Avram Avin says, uh, don't try to compare yourself to Avram. So I, I, truly, that was uh, a, a unique. Rome was alone because it was the, the initiator of the whole of the whole process of Abraham Sasha. But generally speaking, that's not our Indian to compare one with the other. And therefore in that respect it's true that our Indian is not to compare. But uh, the, the point is to explain to to recognize um, uh, all the time we're trying to identify what is in the Kudas for Elis. Where is the Kudus Amos of Rome of Yunus Aveda? The Kudus Amos of Rome of Yunus Aveda was, he was focused on Aveda. The Friedrich Rebbe, the Friedrich Rebbe, you could see this, all the older Aveda, the Friedrich Rebbe, this was, this was extremely blatant because Friedrich Rebbe was much involved in the, in the organization of thing, things. In campaigns, <laughs> he would write. He would write his own his own um, publicity uh, uh, notes. The Antony Shul, Antony Giura, and, and all kinds of different things. He had his his way, and that was all done with with, with total total misunderstanding. But uh, 
Like the Abinu Avraham Okay. Is that, is that, is that a sort of a word of the, this whole thing? The, the lots of different bits of so the normal, you said at the beginning that the normal way the Shama is connected to Hashem, Kalavantai. So it could go either way, it could go. Say again? I mean, that the, this bittel that the Shama is looking for, this is a avoda. In other words, it could go without it, which would be sort of. Yes. Towards yeah, it could be because of its own interest. Yeah, yeah because the Shama subscribes to this and relates to the Ava of the Talmud. So the fact that it goes for Ratsu with the Bittu is uh, the Bittu has to be worked on. Uh, Shabbos is supposed to uh, enjoy your meal. Do you see? You're supposed to enjoy your meal. The food has to be tasty. And you're supposed to enjoy it. That's one of the reasons for the candles of Shabbos. So that you'll be able to see your food, because if you don't see your food, you can't enjoy it. And you're supposed to enjoy it. Along with that, you're supposed to enjoy it because it's through the Shabbos. Covered Shabbos. That's already a challenge. Because the food is enjoyable. The best that I know that most of us will enjoy the food also. Right? So if you enjoy the food, how can it be on COVID Shabbos exclusively? Exclusively? Huh? Exclusively. But you said we have both. It should be exclusive. What? But you said oh. it's supposed to be exclusive, but it's not. You said there's both at the... Both what? Because the food, you should enjoy the food, and that's why there's candles and... No, no, the candles are made to, be, to, to enable you to enjoy the food. Oh, but just because it's covered Shabbos, you're enjoying the food. But the whole it's thing is only because it's Shabbos. Okay. That's why it says that Suda Shabbos in a Magashim. Which means that even though you, you, you're eating food that you enjoy, normally enjoying food would bring a person down into Gashmias and would leave, so to speak, a trace of, of, of a gash music enjoyment. <coughs> it's in the Magash. doesn't have that effect. Well, we know it does. Huh? Well, we know it does. We know it does. Okay, so this is what he says. Ah! So I've explained in how Beatles it's a very subtle, very important union. I'm repeating the days this line. Kash Rotsu Bibhina's beetle when Rotsu is with a beetle element. Oz y yacharov shuv. Then there would be a shuv after it. Which means then this Rotsu will will then be followed by a shuv, which means it would it would be the energy, as I said before, generated by this rotsu would would um, be used to enhance Avedas um, Hashem in Tero Mitzvahs. The yois being that the kavon the whole yehinohi that the kavon of above is bebchinos shuv davka. The kavon of yehino is in the shuv specifically, emphatically davka only. Ukmeisha Kosova, the Posik says, Loilite Hubro, Lo Shabbos Yitzoro. Is the Posik? Loilite Hubro, I think it's a Posik in Mishle, if I'm not mistaken. That Hashem did not create the world, Litoihu. That it should be toihu, it should be disarray, and uh, uh, without without identity, without a, a, a self identity. L'shevas it's all. He designed the world l'shevas that it should be settled. 
This is what we are quoting all the time, in the, right in the beginning of creation. But Hashem instructed Adam, and He said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and capture it, conquer the earth. Which means, as we always say, this year that one of the duties that we have is to actually transform the world into a human world, humanize the world, cultivate it, make it show that this is a godly world. Let us it so, and not let So the rotsu that is that which dissociates from worldliness goes outside of worldliness, and, and it, it goes outside, as we said before, outside of, the, of worldly parameters. It doesn't want to be in Kaelin. It has to be, in, it wants to be in Alokuz, which is a wonderful, uh, wonderfully high madreya, recognizing, so to speak, the element of the Neshoma per se. But the Rotsenu Elin is to bring this in Loshevas into, in, into the world. The Alter Rebbe in Tani explains a big, great principle in different, in different stages and different places. Um, um, but, but one great principle that goes through the entire state of Avayim. The Alter Rebbe says like this, that human Aveda is superior to that of Maloch. By the way, you know, I just want to point out, David Ezra screams about the murder. He says, how can anybody say that human being is superior to a Maloch? Mm-hmm. Maloch in Kedoshim. Nebuchadnezzar is not one to, to, be, to be played about. <laughs> but that's what, but see this explains, no, human beings are superior to Malach. In many different ways. And the altar explains that the Aveda of human beings are superior to Malach. Where do human beings come to Malach? And the reason, the altar says, is that with everything that a human being does, with every little thing that he understands, he's got an opposition. He has a, and, and there's a breakthrough. There's a new from his kafia sitrach, and there's a new from his hapcha sitrach. He's got an accomplishment. Not like a malach, who's got no, ob- no, no obstacles, and therefore he, he's, got, he's got the full power of his, of his nefesh. Without any any in, 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 interference, where do you see the power of nefesh of neshama? This is why the neshama is so superior to Malochim. because Malochim couldn't face these obstacles of klipa. In fact, neshama is able to face it and overcome it. Why? Because neshamas are really rooted in higher than the lakus in atzmos, and therefore they can break through klipa. <coughs> but if Neshama of Ayid chooses to live the life of a Malach then he's, he's, he's missing that calling that purpose how would he do that? Separate there's an expression it's an expression, a Yiddish expression. You may have heard, I think I said it here. Yiddish expression, a tzaddik in pelts. You know what a pelts is? A pelts is, is a fur coat. And, and you lived in, you know, even in Eastern Europe, it was very, very cold in the winters, the Russian, and even Polish in the winters were very, very extreme cold um, winters. Um, 
So the people were uh, more, um, you know, a huge coach was it to keep them to keep more. So he says, at Tzadik in Pelz, so at Tzadik in Pelz, at Tzadik, he, said, he has internal warmth. Because he has, he has a trail of mitzvah, he can recognize that because he has, he has a warm internal world. But he's in pelts, which means that he wraps himself around with his huge coat, fur coat, and keeps warm. The one the difference between a house and a, pel and a pelts is that a house gives you warmth, and everyone else who's in the house also is warmed up at the same time. A pelts can only give and only keep warm on one person at a time. So the tzaddik wraps around and he is very warm. He's hot as a matter of fact. But uh, nobody around him is benefiting from it. He is not really bringing that warmth into the world. That's what that tzaddik can tell us. Again, we take our Rebbe, when the Rebbe came to America, we mentioned all the time, he came to America in 1940 in a wheelchair. And he had other problems, and, he, and, and he, soon his, his speech was impaired and all that. And his whole, his occupation was to transform America. He could have been sitting and doing his thing, and he already, I already went from the world. I already did my, my little thing. My big thing. And the Rebbe said, when he arrived in America, right on the first greeting, <coughs> there was a huge crowd greeting him at the, at the pier. And he was wheeled off in a wheelchair. And he said, I did not come to these shores to benefit of the peace and calm that is here. And he said, the Ashgokha El Yena, the divine providence, had saved me, had brought me here to bring Yiddishkeit here and transform an American, that America should have the European Yiddishkeit. That's what he said at the pier. And he said, this is not what I want, this is Hashgokhalin, this is why I was brought here. That's, that's what we're talking about here. And then, great Chesidim, the Rebbe's greatest friends, who were instrumental in bringing him here, and securing his safety. <clears throat> came in to see the Rebbe, to welcome him, and to, and to rejoice and make shekhyon and all that. And they said, we have to make the following comment, that the Rebbe, we told that the Rebbe has set himself this great goal, we simply don't want the Rebbe to suffer disappointment. Because here in America, this is not possible. And the Rebbe writes in his Neshimis, and not, the Rebbe spoke about it later. He says, how many tears I, I, I shed on, these, on, on, on that meeting. He, he came to America. Saved out of the, of, the, of the burning Europe. And was greeted by his friends. And he was crying all night. Because what's the point? The Rebbe once spoke, not once, many times. During the time that Russia was still, was still behind the Iron Curtain, still a, a place of, of suffering.
Uh, so there are many things that people tried to do, and the Rebbe was very much opposed. One thing the Rebbe said that we should increase our own Torah learning. So this is wonderful. We should increase our own Torah learning. So how can you increase your own Torah learning, forgetting you, your 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 fellow Jews out, out there in Russia? So the Rebbe said, no, that's not what, what the point is. The point is that our learning helps them. It gives them strength to overcome their challenges. So we should sit down and learn. We should learn with all the diligence, with all the depth and all that. But it doesn't mean that we forget what the real the real task at hand, at hand is? This is called the this is the beetle. This beetle really touches on what's called what you said amitis on truth itself. You enjoy the Shabbos meal and enjoying you have to be involved. And you're involved with beetle. And it's not a personal enjoyment. It's a phenomenal thing. Okay. Oh boy, yeah. Okay, now just get into the next. Okay, so this explains this beetle and and the Kavon El Yena is, is in the Shuv. <coughs> That's the real thing. And that is in a, in a Tzio Legamre in a manner that is completely shedding, stepping out of the world. He begins his Pashas on Nefesh. He begins his Pashas on Nefesh. That represents the union you know, of his Pashas, means his Pashas. Expressing the nefesh, it expresses, it experiences its its own desire. The opposite of beetle. Beetle is kibbutz, is contraction, contraction. <laughs> See, his is on nefesh. He's enjoying it. Abol kasher who is beetle. But when he has he has the inha beetle. And we explained what it's, where is the basis and the source of being being a beetle. So then, and begins anochas as musay, and essentially he's putting himself aside. He is not seeking to satisfy himself, but also to fill, to to relate to the truth itself. Oz then, gamim yiyeh. Listen to this. Gamim yiyeh harotzu begins taking atzimoy, even if the rotzim would be. In the Turkey of Atimoy, with tremendous, with overwhelming um, desire, overwhelming thirst, and we explained previously what the Timoy, what Timoyan is, that he really wants to get in and 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 imbue totally in Olakus. Nevertheless, Yiyeh Bebchina Shuv Acharzeh Kefi Hakavon Hol Yena. There will nevertheless be a Shuv afterwards. If you are Kavon in accordance with Kavon Halyin. Hmm. Okay, this is it <laughs> for tonight. Uh -huh. I don't think we have a sponsor for the Shabbos. A good night, Rabbi Paltiel. Borach, a good night.